Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where no, I am, I'm not tipsy today. I'm actually starting this video earlier than usual because I'm anticipating this could be a long one. I'm going to have a crack at Chaos Cave Sudoku by Magnus Josephson. Now, Magnus is one of the very tip-top solvers and setters in the whole world. Uh, the brother of Jesper Josephson. I think they're twins, if I remember rightly. So what an intelligent family. Jesper Josephson is another total genius um, who we've covered on the channel many times. But the reason that I feel I have to have a go at this, even though it's an incredibly large grid, is it's got a 100% approval rating on Logic Masters Germany, five stars out of five for difficulty, and the comments from those who have managed to solve it, and there aren't that many, are stellar. Uh, it's been recommended to us, requested by those who have failed to solve it as well. Um, so I am going to have a go at it for you. Um, but I, I imagine this is going to be a brutal puzzle. Um, and it's sort of a... I think I've done... I th I, I'm getting deja vu because I think Magnus did another type of puzzle that was similar to this that was it might have been called cave philomeno sudoku or maybe it was no maybe it wasn't sudoku maybe it was just philomeno logic with cave logic uh, i don't know i'm getting that that sort of feeling that i've seen something like this before um <laughs> but it's got an absolutely remarkable rule set we actually have to find where in this grid there is a hidden sudoku grid um, yes, that doesn't look very easy to do, does it? Anyway, that's that's going to be our task um, in a moment or two. Let me, uh, what, what can I tell you about before that? Let me first of all show you the weather that we've been grappling with. Um, can, and can I show you this actually? Yes, I can look here. There, that is the crack in the cryptic garden this morning, full of snow. This doesn't happen very often in the UK. It's very beautiful. Uh, but quite difficult when driving, let me tell you that. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, what else did I need to tell you about? There was loads of stuff I was meant to mention. I'm, I'll do the birthdays. Happy birthday, Sally, from your sister, Anne. Um, I think, Sally, you're over there in Arlington, Virginia, and Anne's in Boston. And I understand that you, you spend quite a lot of online time talking about the puzzles on the channel, which is lovely. I love hearing about how families have been brought closer together. Um, by these puzzles. It's an absolutely brilliant phenomenon. Um, and also, Daniel, you've turned 26 today. And Daniel, I appreciated your hopes that the echoes of the chocolate cake you were planning to have would waft their way across the pond. Um, well, I hope so too, but I, I live in hope if not expectation. Um, other than that, we've got, of course, we've got the cryptic scriptures of the Secret Snake Society. This is our Patreon reward. Um, because because I was out yesterday, I haven't had a chance to finish the final Fistimafel puzzle that we're hoping to release as a Christmas present to our patrons. But anyway, there is, of course, this massive um, snake hunt for you. And very well done to the following who've managed to solve all of the puzzles in that hunt. Some Buddy, Palfly Campling, Hunter John, Grothar, Arachnothera, Titus Adaxus, hmm. <laughs> Darko Illich, Dave Mustang Lang, um, Matt Bernardina, uh, Rob Driscoll, Peter Spute, Benoit Massard, Scott Abercrombie, Naresh Satyan, and Kim Geiger. That is the next batch of names. Very well done to all of you. You've still got a week more than a week to enter the competition. And if anybody manages to finish all the puzzles, then they'll get a shout out on the channel. So do get cracking. And if you do start and you get stuck, go over to the Patreon channel on the Discord server. There's loads of help available there. Anyway, we should delay no longer <laughs> because this could be about a six hour video. Let me read you the rules of Chaos Cave Sudoku by Magnus Josephson. They are as follows. And I've got, oh, hang on. I've got an example puzzle that I just snipped from Logic Masters Germany. Where is that? Because we are going to be uh, thinking about this. So this is a completed grid, although you can see the completed grid in this puzzle is a six by six Sudoku. Oh, I see. Well, it, yes, it is a six by six Sudoku, but it's sort of Oh, hang on. Let's read the rules and find out what's going on. Place some digits in the grid and shade some cells so that a. There is a 9x9 nine nine subgrid filled with digits that forms a valid standard Sudoku. 
Right, so in this example, I think there's a six by six grid in the middle of the grid. It's, it's framed in blue. It's not the white cells, they're, they're something different. B, disregarding, oh, okay. So disregarding the interior seven by seven of the Sudoku subgrid, the rest of the grid forms a valid cave. And we're going to talk about what that means in a moment, I think. So let's look at this example. In the example, there is a six by six that's been hidden in the puzzle. And we can see that. Then you ignore the sort of middle bit of the six by six, which is the white cells. And the rest of the grid has to form a valid cave. Now, what is a valid cave? A valid cave is formed where all unshaded cells are orthogonally connected. Right, so that must be the green cells. Yes, I can see all the green cells. They are all orthogonally connected. That is true. Okay. Um, all shaded cells are orthogonally connected to an edge of the grid. NB, the borders around the 7x7 seven seven interior of the Sudoku are edges for this purpose. Right. Oh, so what's that saying? That's saying that... The grey cells have to connect to an edge. And it looks like they do, doesn't it? I see. So sometimes, so like in this six region, they connect to two edges because they connect to the bottom edge of the grid and the sort of edge of the white, which is tr to be treated as an edge for the purposes of these rules. This is complicated. <laughs> um, Okay, but I think I understand it so far. Now, what's the rest of this? I'm going to have to scroll down, then I'll, I'll reinstate the example puzzle. So, uh, each number written in an unshaded cell must show how many cells can be seen from that position horizontally and vertically, where the view is limited by the next shaded cell or an edge of the grid. The cell with the number itself is included in the count, and each number in a shaded cell must equal the total number of shaded cells in that orthogonally connected group of shaded cells. Good grief. Wow. Wow. I can see why this is five out of five for difficulty. It's five out of five difficulty to understand the instructions. So <laughs> let's just think about this. So I can see, if I look at the grey areas and see where they have a digit in them, those grey digits seem to be specifying the size of the island that they are in. Not all grey areas actually have a, a number in them, but that's two, for example, here. You can see that's part of a region of size two. This six is part of a region of size six. But, oh, that's Mark calling, um, but I'm going to carry on. Um, so, but let's just think about the green regions. Because the green regions have, I see, so the green regions operate like normal cave rules. So this six here, let's look at this six that I'm just ringing here. You can see that if you count how many green cells it sees, as sort of an e in an east-west direction, it sees four, including itself. And in a north-south direction, it sees two more. So it sees six altogether. This five sees the same four horizontally that the six sees and then it sees one cell in the north x one extra cell in the north south direction that's why it is a five right but the challenge here i can immediately see is going to be to understand how we shade the puzzle because it, it if we go back to this puzzle which is our actual puzzle which is an enormous grid let's actually see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen right it's 16 across is it it does look square so it's probably 16 by 16 but we don't know any of the shading i mean imagine we knew this four was shaded then we would know that it has to connect to the an, well, an edge of the grid which could be this edge or it could be the edge of a sudoku grid we're going to have to find in the puzzle good grief this is complicated right 
Anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. I fully appreciate that this is this is complicated today, but it is meant to be a spectacular puzzle. And I will tell you that Magnus is a spectacular setter. We are dealing with a spectacular mind today. So if you want to do battle with a spectacular mind, I can think of no better way to do it than to spend some time today thinking about this puzzle. Now, if you don't mind, though, I am going to spend a moment or two um, the way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video. I can't remember if I said that. Now I'm going to play Let's Get Cracking. But rarely for me, I'm going to start getting cracking by staring at the example grid again and just trying to understand what it is, if anything, that is constraining the puzzle. So what I'm, what I'm sort of thinking about here, right, I have actually spotted something as a result of looking at this grid. So this was not not a fool's errand. Ah, but the problem is, right, one's in the grid. Well, this is the difficulty is you don't know where the Sudoku is, but you can. I can see that ones in the cave area of the grid are always shaded, and that makes sense because obviously, imagine this one here was unshaded. That would be saying that it would be a green cell so one would be the count of the cell seen in the in the east west and the north south directions so it would only see itself so it would be isolated it would be surrounded in fact by gray and that would break the rules of the puzzle which requires the greens to all be orthogonally connected to each other so if we can find right let's go back to this grid We've got we've got four ones that are given. Let me move my pencil. If we've got four ones that are given, if well, it's not possible for those two, for example, to be both in the Sudoku grid. So one of those at least must be grey. And if it's grey, wow, wow. If that I've just had another thought. If that was grey, how would it connect to the edge of the grid? It would have to connect to the edge of the Sudoku grid. Wow. Uh, although the other alternative, of course, is that this is grey. No, hang on, which way around is it? Yeah, so if that's grey, that can be part of the Sudoku grid. No, hang on, it's on the peri Oh, now I'm getting really confused. Let's go back to the example. Everything, yeah, ah, oh, okay. So actually a one, if we look at ones on the perimeter, well, look at this one, that's gray. And even if I, if I, I push the Sudoku grid left in this puzzle, um, because the perimeter of the Sudoku grid is always counted both in the Sudoku and in the cave part of the puzzle, a one in the perimeter will always be, well, you can't have a one in the puzzle Oh, well, you can't have a one on the perimeter of this puzzle, by which I mean the outer perimeter, that is not a cave clue. It could be part of the Sudoku. So this could be part of the Sudoku. But even if it is part of the Sudoku, it has to be a cave clue, because imagine we put a nine by nine in the corner like something like that. I might have got the count wrong. It doesn't matter. But if that's the nine by nine, um, we we know that the bit of the nine by nine that doesn't count in the cave. I think I've, I think I've done this eight by eight, actually. But the, but the point is, uh, in fact, I will fix it because it might confuse people. Um, so let me make it slightly bigger. There we go. So this whole area here, is the Sudoku, everything that is blue. And the green interior, which is a green, the green interior seven by seven would not count as part of the cave as well. So, but this one clue, the point is this one clue would always be part of the cave. So, although, hang on. I'm now worrying that you could never have I'm wondering now whether you can ever put the Sudoku grid this close to the edge because
No, this is nonsense. I, I Well, I'm going to claim that this is total nonsense. I don't think this is... Tr so I don't think this is a possible Sudoku grid. And I don't think any... I'm going to make a further claim, which is that I don't believe it's possible to ever put the Sudoku grid in this 16 by 16 grid in a position where it borders the puzzle, where it borders on the 16 by 16 perimeter. And that's because, let's just look at this, this bottom bit here. I'd have to fill, obviously I've got to fill the bottom of the grid with some numbers. It doesn't, I don't think it's going to matter what these numbers are. Let's just put some in. These all have to be valid cave clues. Well, the only one of these that can... Now, this is wrong. This never works. Yeah, this is good, actually. This is a good deduction. So the only clue you could ever put that bounded the 7x7 seven seven, uh, as a grey clue would be the 1. Because the 1 can be grey because it is in an island of size 1 and it can be surrounded by green on these two sides. But how could this be a grey six clue? That would be saying it was in an island of size six, but the green doesn't count towards this island. So that I'd have to, I'd have to spread it to touch. So this, if this six was grey, it's going to have to touch and make grey other cells that are adjacent to it and that immediately contradicts it because this is this six is saying if it's gray it's saying it's in an island of size six so we try and make an island of size six and it immediately touches a five makes that gray and that says oh no this is this six is actually in an island of size five which is contradictory so the only way this could work every digit apart from the one along a boundary would have to be green but that doesn't work because if we make these green, what cells are they seeing? Well, they're seeing everything horizontally, but they're not seeing anything vertically. Green is a terrible color for this interior, I've just realized. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have made this green. That's going to confuse people. Let me just change the color of this interior bit, just so that there's no confusion here about what about what I speak. Uh, it's got to be blue. Uh, oh, Bobbins. <laughs> I should have ungreened this bit first, <laughs> and I didn't. Um, there. Right, so these would all be green, but what are they seeing? Well, they they can they can't see anything north. They're blocked by the edge of the grid, as defined by the inner Sudoku grid. So they have to see horizontally, and if they see horizontally, they're all seeing the same count of cells. They're seeing however many horizontally that, that are green. So they all should have the same clue and they don't. So this is important. This is important because now, well, I might as well reset the puzzle. Actually, I'm just going to restart it. <laughs> now, not only am I convinced that this cell is gray and this cell is gray, I'm further convinced that neither of these cells is part of the actual Sudoku. And nor, indeed, is any, any cell on the perimeter. I'm wondering if it's worth coloring that, but I think I'm going to get confused if I color that. I think I'm just going to remember that. None of those cells that I've just highlighted, let me highlight them briefly. None of those purple cells is part of the Sudoku for the reasons I've just explained. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, but what I am going to do, because I've learned that these ones are definitely shaded, I'm going to surround them with unshaded cells that are part of the cave. Now, now, do you get the checkerboarding in this puzzle that you normally get in cave? So I'm looking at this one. And the answer is, hang on, this is where I'm going to have to pause and use my brain. And E by gum, what does that mean? I, th I think I'm just going to think about this up here, if that's all right. So normally in a cave puzzle, that pattern of shading is impossible. And let me explain why. 
it's impossible because we have two contradictory conditions that we need to fulfill. The first condition is that every gray area gets to the edge of the grid. The second condition is that the green areas connect with one another orthogonally. So you can see that to connect the greens up, if we decide the greens are going to connect down this way, however they do that, whatever pattern they achieve this connection by, however circuitous it is, this grey could never get to the boundary. If they decide, on the other hand, we're going to connect these greens around the top, we have exactly the same problem. This grey can never get to the boundary. Now, what I'm just wondering is, does that apply in a puzzle where there is an internal boundary? I have no clue. Let, uh, let's just draw in. I'm, well, it doesn't have to be a big grid. I'm just going to draw in a little grid. <laughs> just let's put in a middle. So we're going to put this little Sudoku grid in the middle of the thing where, where we're saying that anything that touches blue, not, not purple, Anything that touches blue orthogonally is treated as having achieved touching an edge. So imagine that six was gray and it did that. Then this six has, has touched a boundary. Let's make it six so it doesn't, it doesn't affect my OCD. Um, now, does that, does that make any difference at all? I haven't, I don't know. Sorry, I can't quite visualize this. Um, I apologize to everyone out there who's shouting at me now. Does it make any difference? if you can have an internal oh, I can't see it <laughs> I'm struggling to see it sorry um, or maybe may, or, okay so maybe it's Okay, let me think about it. I'm, I'm actually not going to, th I, mean, I think this six is confusing me. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just going to put a checkerboard in here. Right, let me think about this. So, why would this either be possible or impossible? Normally, we would say it was impossible because, ah, Ah, right. No, this is now, this is very annoying. This now is possible. I can now see it, but now I've got away from my six inch here. Because what if this cell touched this two by two, like that, for example? Now, ordinarily, in without this central the ability to get hold of an edge in the middle of the grid, we would have said, okay, well, if we connect these greens around the top, this would have been isolated from an edge. And that we can see it would be isolated from an edge, except that there's an internal edge here in blue. So if the green rings the whole Sudoku grid like this, it has achieved it. You rotten thing. Oh dear, oh dear, that's very annoying. That's very annoying. So you can, in this puzzle, so let me just stare at this for a bit longer. So in this puzzle, all my normal cave restriction doesn't even apply. This is so annoying because what I wanted to do is make both of those cells green. And now I don't even think I can do that. Yeah, because it imagine, in fact, imagine that cell wended its way somehow and managed to touch that blue cell there. I suppose it can't, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I mean, this, this is a silly example, but I was just thinking this, 
this can't it can't touch it with an island that's bigger than size nine. Oh no, it can. Oh no, that's 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 a nightmare as well. I've just realised I might not even have the digits to do this puzzle. Oh my. Uh. Although, hang on. If it touches the if it touches the Sudoku grid. Yeah. No. Actually, that, that I think there is a restriction. I think the maximum checkerboard avoiding thing would be nine because it would have to connect it has to, if, it, if you've got to connect it orthogonally to here it's going through the perimeter of the sudoku which means there's got to be a gray nine as a maximum digit here so maybe if this was the grid this there wouldn't be possible in this particular example because it would take more than nine orthogonal steps to get from here to here but of course this doesn't need to be the sudoku grid the sudoku grid could be much closer to this cell so right so this this joins the sudoku grid let's ignore the nine restriction for a moment but then this green and this green can loop right around the sudoku grid and that would be fine Ah, although, okay, there is a, right, here is another point then. Here is another point that might not be true, and that's why I'm pausing here, I'm just trying to think about it. Can you have, this is the question I'm asking in my brain, um, and my brain is not telling me the answer, but I'm suspicious the answer, I know the answer. Um, can you have two checkerboards in this puzzle is a question I want to ask. And the answer to that might be no, <laughs> because I was just thinking about this, this checkerboard here. If we, if we sort of play this out, this cell has to get to an edge, but because we needed to connect the greens around the whole Sudoku grid, the only way this gets to an edge is if it, is if it goes to an edge of the actual grid because it can't cut through this 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 orthogonal connection which is necessary between these two green cells. So imagine we're in this situation and then we give ourselves we set ourselves the task of having another checkerboard in the puzzle. So we've got this one, that's a checkerboard. Can we put another one in now? And I'm going to claim the answer is no. And the reason I think it's no is that in effect, I think it is no. And the, re the reason I think it's no is that this pattern here forms in effect a wall, an a wall that an orthogonal connection of green can never breach. So if there was another checkerboard, let's put it up here. Um, Let's put it up here. Let's go boop, 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 boop. Then, how would we do this? We, we know that the only way that this can work is if this connects to the middle of the grid, which it can do, although although that would, in, in oh, I see, I could put it inside, oh, good grief. Right, to actually make this general, I think I've got to put it inside this connection. So I'm going to do that. Um, let's put it in these cells. There, so this is the one I want to focus on now, that one. Now, how would we do this? Well, we could connect this to the interior. That would work. Let's do that. But now we know that this must connect to the edge of the grid. Let's make that happen. And you can see it's, it's already giving us a problem, which is that these, in order to connect this and this together, the point is that you have to, you have to ring this. And in ringing that, you're gonna run into this wall. So that is impossible. So you can have one checkerboard and that's that's general that must generally be the, the case, mustn't it? Because in allowing yourself the luxury of one checkerboard, you are basically creating a wall from the seven by seven interior Sudoku grid 
to the external perimeter, which another orthogonal connection of greens around, the, around that internal Sudoku grid cannot breach. And therefore, at that point, we would go back to the normal cave secret, which is that you can't have a checkerboard. Right. And the problem with all this is it's all utterly, utterly irrelevant, in fact, in terms of solving the puzzle, because, well, I can keep these, but everything Everything internal to this is, is gibberish because it's just it was just an, as an example to make me understand the puzzle. And more importantly, oh, let's get rid of my lines here as well. I cannot now even green those two cells. <laughs> I would have let them let, yeah, if I'd have been able to green that, I would have broken the puzzle. Oh, hang on a moment. What's going on there then? Now I'm confused. Um, well, I can... Uh, sorry, I know I've just stopped speaking. And that's because I'm now worried that everything I've just said is about... Well... I thought I was going to be able to, well, if I'd, so is this, is this a checkerboard then, is what I'm now thinking. That would be really beautiful if, it, if this is, if this is, I really like this, if this is right, because it actually falls out of some very natural logic. What I was looking down here and I was thinking, if you couldn't have a checkerboard, I was going to be able to create a U pentomino of greenliness around here. I didn't notice that this one has a two in this position. So I was hoping, obviously, to go double green to avoid checkerboards. But it just occurs to me now, how can that ever be green? If that's green... Is this affected by the, if there's a Sudoku somewhere near, I don't think so. Oh, no, that might be it. Okay. Yeah, okay. I've suddenly had a horrible thought about this. I have been flippantly making these two cells green. I mean, what we can say, what we can say is that if, if the Sudoku grid doesn't interfere with this six cell sequence, if there's no Sudoku grid near here, say the Sudoku grid is over there somewhere, then that, then there is no way this, this cell here can be green. Because if it's green and part of the cave, it's definitely seeing three cells. So that cell would have to be grey and that creates a checkerboard and that grey would have to get to the Sudoku grid in on the interior so that would be a massive deduction that would be a massive deduction if that's true but I don't think it is well it could be true but I don't think it's necessarily true because what I think I've missed here is is it actually the case that I can I can shade the interior? Is it necessarily the case that this cell is part of the cave? It's certainly true these two have to be because we did the work earlier on discovering that the perimeter of the puzzle is entirely not in the Sudoku. But why is that cell not in the Sudoku? Is the question that I've got for myself, unfortunately. So let's just put the Sudoku here somehow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, trying not to sneeze. Right. Let's say that's the Sudoku. Oh, well, hang on. If that's the Sudoku, that still is green. 
Oh no, it's this is okay. This is okay. I'm being I'm being very slow. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I was just I miss I'm getting myself confused in my head between the internal seven by seven and the total nine by nine. Now, okay, so let's let's let me let me re-explain to myself now, not to you guys who will, will be all over this, and I'm just being slow. But I proved in my own mind that you couldn't have the Sudoku doing this. That's impossible. So the closest the Sudoku ever gets to the edge is something like this. But that's important for the one clue because those cells, even in that situation, are still in the perimeter of the Sudoku and therefore count in the cave. So it is valid to do that and that. And now, if that's true, and this can't be green, that has to be actually a real grey too and create a real checkerboard. So now, what on earth does that mean? Because to connect this and this together, which I must do, you can see this, well, it's not big enough anyway, but if this somehow got to the edge like this, this green would be isolated. So that's not doing that. This cell is connecting either is connecting to the seven by seven. Yeah, it's because it's, no, oh, this is really confusing. Now, I'm gonna come back to the example. It's the seven by seven that's providing the edge of the grid that allows a checkerboard to happen. So this two either in this cell or this cell is hitting the seven by seven interior of the puzzle. Oh, hang on, is that a one, two, three, four, five, six? That cannot happen. I don't think that, this, oh, this is really clever. I think this has been positioned such that it, it literally cannot create a Sudoku grid downwards. Let me just, let me just think about this. <laughs> um, I know that the Sudoku grid cannot run along here, so the closest one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is if so if the grey goes downwards, it would have to look something like that. No, but that's running along the bottom again. That doesn't work. I'm not allowed to do that. So I'd have to go up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm just going to make this blue for a moment. Let me just think about this. So what's wrong with that? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> um, Oh no, this doesn't right. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, this is real. It's really all the deductions are findable. Actually, it's just getting your head around it, and I'm re being really slow. I've taken 38 minutes to do nothing here, but I'm getting there now because no, this does not work. And the reason it doesn't work is the only way that this sort of thing, the only way this, this can come downwards for its, its second connection is if, if, is if this is running along the nine by nine perimeter of the Sudoku grid. But the implication of that is that this cell turns gray and has to have the same number in it as this too. And that's not going to work because this is a Sudoku grid and every number in its column has to be different. So that cannot be true. And we know that we can't, you know, we can't have the Sudoku grid ever overlapping the edge. So the only way this works, I'm going to contend. The only way this works is if this is gray and therefore these cells well, actually, hang on. Uh, this is taking 
this two to the seven by seven. I know it can't run here. That does. Or oh, actually, hang on. Oh, ah. Now I'm now I'm confusing myself again. Am I saying that this is the edge of the Sudoku grid now, or am I saying that if that's the edge? I know that this is a cave clue. I do know this is a cave clue. So it must see a grey cell. So if that was in the 7x7, seven seven, it wouldn't be in the cave, and that would break it because it would force this to be the cave cell and that to be the Sudoku grid, which it can't be. Right, so this cell touches the 7x7, seven seven, which means that this somehow here is the left-hand side of the Sudoku grid. Now, how do I make use of that? I do not know. Well, the, the, okay, I know how you make use of that. This, I've decided, is part of my 7x7. Seven seven. So, so it must go that way, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is forced. This is Sudoku grid, and therefore this is Sudoku grid. So, maybe I go to the pen tool. Let's do... Actually, I, I don't like that green colour. I'm going to go black. There we go, like that. So we're going to have an interior of bluenesses, which is going to be seven by seven in the end. And then... So we're going to have sort of a... I don't know whether to do an internal colour here or not. I'm I'm confusing myself a bit. Um, but anyway, the, the dark lines, we have to just remember, are the Sudoku grid. They are delineating the 9x9, nine nine, and that should be 9 cells. Now, so that cell is a 2, because that is a grey cell. It's part of the perimeter of the Sudoku grid. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. this is good. Right. That's what this two is doing, isn't it? That cell now cannot be part of the Sudoku grid because that would put two twos in this column. So the furthest up that this can go is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it has to go down here, which means all of these cells turn blue. That's lovely. This is all Sudoku grid down here. So this is all Sudoku grid down here. Okay, so now, now what I should be doing, I guess, is to... We know that this cell's part of the... We know all those cells are part of the cave, so we must isolate our island with a bunch of greens. So that, that's all forced. Don't, oh, I was about to say, don't make a checkerboard. Is that, is that now legitimate, given I've got my one checkerboard? Well, actually, you can clearly see this can't be grey, because it's going to box in a box in a green. So that must be green. Ah, now what about that one then? Is that green? If that was grey... Yeah, it's 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 fine. That that is not grey. Because because I think the earlier logic, I've got to trust it basically. I have now got this wall. This is effectively an orthogonal blocking wall. So this checkerboard provided me with an orthogonal blocking wall, which prevents me um, from connecting these two up in any way that's going to be helpful. Because remember, this has to get either to the edge of the grid or to the edge of the Sudoku grid. Now, if it gets to the edge of the Sudoku grid, this green is isolated. If it gets to the edge of the grid, this green is isolated. And it must do one of those things. Yeah. And previously, there would have been the opportunity for it to slink around the Sudoku grid like this. And meet its friend like that but the orthogonal wall prevents that so that cell is definitely green and we can now ah, so that means these two 
by the same token any any other checkerboard in the in the grid is now uh, is now fair game for us uh, doing some logic on it now so hang on how big is my sudoku grid so far i've got four definite ah now does that mean that no uh i was going to say does the fact i've shaded this mean that this has to be part of the sudoku grid but i don't think it does um what we want is i'm looking like sort of trying to imagine i've got a sudoku grid in this part of the world and trying to see whether i can get the same numbers into rows or columns so that i can immediately say well that's impossible you know a bit like we did with the twos here um that definitely is in the sudoku grid So that, that digit is at least a three because it sees three greens. That's the world's worst deduction, isn't it? That is the world's worst deduction. Okay. Um, oh. Okay, I don't know whether this is true or not. I'm thinking questions like, how does this two ever connect to the edge of the grid? I don't, I, maybe that, okay, so maybe you can ask general questions like, can this ever be gray? Because I don't know that it can be. If I stretch the Sudoku grid as far up as, oh no, it can. No, I'm talking absolute nonsense. Oh, but hang on, orthogonally connected to the seven by seven is not gonna work. Yeah, for this to connect to the middle bit of the grid, it has to hit the seven by seven, which is actually coming up this way. And it definitely can't touch that in two cells. So that, and it can't get to the edge of the actual grid in two cells. So I'm going to claim that cell's green. Now that means it's got, we can't do a great deal with that, can we? Now, what about these ones then? Do I know what these, what their nature is? Maybe it's easier to think about ones. Ones? Oh, ones could be in the seven by, ah! Oh my goodness, this is it. I've done it. I've done it. Wow. Oh, that's so clever, Magnus. He's so, he's so clever. He's so clever. He's making me look so stupid here. Now, right. How can a one exist in the middle of this puzzle? We know that if there's a one in the middle of the puzzle, There are only two ways to deal with that. The one can never be a green cave clue. So it could be a gray cave, cave clue. That's very, very true. But if it's a gray cave clue, it must connect to the edge of the grid or it might, well, the edge of the grid. It's in the middle. So how does you connect that? If that's a, if that is a cave, valid cave clue, it's got to connect to the seven by seven. And I can see only one way it could do that. Now, if it's neither of those things, that's fine if it's in the seven by seven. Go back to the example again. Look, there are loads of white ones in this grid, but they are in the seven by seven. Everything that's not in the seven by seven has to be gray. So how does this exist? I can't, now I've got this blue. This is the development of my seven by seven. I cannot get these two ones into it. It's impossible, it won't go high enough. That's the, as high as the seven by seven goes. So these two both are valid cave clues. They're both therefore shaded and far more interestingly, well, not as well, just the interest just keeps going now. Yes, I'm not a guy you want to talk to at parties. <laughs> Unless you find this sort of thing fascinating. But how do you connect this to the edge of the grid? Well, it's got to be connected to the seven by seven. So that's the seven by seven fixed. That's forced. And now we know the Sudoku grid. So, so we can just ring it. This is the Sudoku grid, which must ring the seven by seven. Oh, that's lovely. 
Uh, let me just check I've got the right size. I think it is the right size. It ought to be. Ah, oh, I feel I feel pleased about that. Now, well, now I know what I'm going to do. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide up the Sudoku into lines. So we could do this, couldn't we? Let's do that so that we can actually see, whoa, we can actually see if there's any Sudoku we can do. Yeah, look, look, there's little things we can start to do now. There's a one in one of those two cells. Um, uh, there might be more things we can do, but the, the thing, next thing that's tempting me is that these ones obviously are real cave clues. So they have to be bordered by green linesses. Uh, and oh, and, and I'm going to be able to do my checkerboards now because I can't have any more checkerboards. So that's got to not be uh, brown, uh, grey, or that will create a checkerboard. These two have got to be greened. Um, no idea what that means. Uh, well, hang on, that that two now can't come here, can it? If that, well, it, and what I mean is, if this is green. The two is broken. So that's grey. And this grey has to either get to the edge of the 7x7 seven seven or the edge of the grid. Um, uh, OK, what about that cell now? That's catching my attention. That is a green digit. So it so what I'm going to fill into this cell is how many green cells it sees north south east west well it only sees three cells so I think that's a three and I think that's a four by exactly that logic this is starting to fill in my Sudoku oh, this is so cool isn't it oh <laughs> now this cell has to be more than one two three or four by Sudoku so it's at least five and it's green so it's got so that's turning both of those cells green this is at least a five, um, so five, six. Oh, well, that's, oh, is that worth doing? Is it worth actually labeling those green cells up? Five, six, sevens, eights, and nines. I think it might be. I wouldn't normally do it, but I think in this puzzle where I need to count, like that can't be nine. Right, okay, that's the next thing I'm seeing is that there's a relationship between these three digits. They are a sort of Renban sequence, I'm going to claim, by which I mean, well, this cell, if we look at what it sees from a cave perspective, let's go, it sees those cells and it sees everything vertically that's green. This cell sees the same vertical sequence that this one sees. So it must see a different number in its horizontal sequence. Otherwise, it would contain the same digit as the cell above it. And that has exactly the same property. So what this is saying is that for these two cells, we're going to have to have this got to be grey to the at least one grey to the left of both of these and one of them has two greys um, and I've got to do that with or is that true or maybe I no I think it maybe it is true that one of them's got two greys because if they don't am I not checkerboarding again so I was thinking maybe I could do it like with a grey here and a grey here instead. But that would put greens here and here and that would create a checkerboard which I know I can't have because I've already got my checkerboard up here. Right, so I'm now going to claim, I think this is right but I'm not, I'm not a million percent certain. Um, I think that those three cells contain exactly three greys, I think. But I'm not sure that's actually helpful because I don't think I know where they go. So if that was nine, these would be an eight seven pair. Uh, okay, this this digit has to be 
capable of being two higher than whatever I put in these. So the minimum I could put into those two squares would be a five, six pair. So this must be at least equal to seven because it's counting these two cells. So one of these is just counting the vertical strip. Ah, yeah, okay. So one of these, because this is at least seven, or the other way of seeing this is that this, this vertical strip has to be at least five, doesn't it? Of five continuous greens. So we've got to get here. And just to reinforce that, imagine I'd had made that five, which was previously an option. What on earth would I've put in here? Well, this would, in order for this not to be five, there would have had to be a gray in one of these two cells. And that would have made it less than five, which would have been an illegal digit. So that, that I think is sensible, sound logic. That can't be nine for the same reason then. But one of these could be eight if this is nine. Uh, let's get rid of my red line here. I think that's probably otios now. So this is a strip of at least five vertically. And this cell is therefore five, six, seven, eight or nine by Sudoku. And that, oh, I see, right. And that's going to be able to see along the Sudoku grid in order to correct its count away from whatever these three digits are. Ooh, so does that mean that has to be green? I think it does. Imagine this was not green. Now this cell, it's seeing the same string vertically as these three cells. And it can't see a different number horizontally because whether I gray these or not, every single combination is catered for by these three digits. Yeah, so that's got to be green. Wow, I don't think that's really doing that much, you know. How long have I had? Nearly an hour, nearly an hour. And I, well, I have got digits and I've located the puzzle. So that's maybe not the worst thing that's ever happened in the history of Sudoku. Um, but I'm very much unsure about how to, how to do, do whatever I've got to do next. Um, can I think of anything clever? here. Seven, six, five. These would be an eight, nine pair. This would be gray. If that's seven, that would be gray. There's nothing wrong with that that I can immediately see. If that's eight, these would be a six. Uh, so it's either seven, six, five, eight, seven, six, or nine, Eight, seven. So there's always a seven in this string of digits, which means that's not seven and that's not seven. Which, ah, hang on, that can't be nine, can it? Because it's got a grace, ah, yeah, hang on. This, the count of this cell's interesting. Oh, this is where we should be looking. <laughs> okay, look at this cell. That's at least a five and it's it's in a little alleyway. So it's only counting these cells. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's maximum size is seven. So it can't be eight or nine. So that is five or six. Now, is, if it's six, it's really useful, isn't it? Because if it's six, I think the only way it reaches a count of six if it if it's exactly those six. So if it's six, this would have to be nine, eight, seven. And that would have to be five. But that Oh, no, this doesn't work. There's something wrong here. Do 
Yeah, okay. That can't be five, I'm now realising. Because, because it... Because it needs to see a different total from the, ho from the vertical string. Otherwise, it's going to match off with one of these two. And it already sees five. So, so that's why we had to put this green in, was to stop this having the same count. So that is at least six. So now if that's six, because this is a Remban string, it has to be nine, eight, seven, that has no actual option. So this is five and that's, it's good, but it's not the digit we were hoping for. So now, the problem with this being five, well, I suppose what I can do is those two must both be green because even if I take that digit as green, it was still a string would still get me these two as green. Um, so this, oh, oh, no, 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 this is better. It's actually a lot better. I don't know why I can't see these things. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Right, this being five meant that even if I took this, I have to take these two, but now I can't take this one. Because if I did, it's becoming six. So this is actually useful. That, oh, good grief. Right, hang on. This cell is not a one or a two. That's at least a three. So we've got, that's got to grow. Ooh. That could be exciting, he says, realizing that actually it's just stopped there. But that was, that was quite exciting for a moment. So that cell is now green. Um... Now, this string of digits, 987, 876, and we can't have 765 here. This can't be 7 anymore because these two can't be 6 and 5. Right, so that is not 7. This is now 8 or 9. So if... Is, does that mean this can't be eight? It can't be eight now, can it? Because this is either nine, eight, seven or eight, seven, six. So this cell is now either six or nine. And if it's, if it is six, it's already seeing all of its six. So that cell, that cell and that cell would all turn gray. Um, I'm sure that there must be a reason that that doesn't work, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. Uh, any ideas, anybody? I just needed to. I just needed to see one more cell, and then I could write nine in here. Oh, I think I can do that actually. Hang on, what? How does this achieve a count of eight now? Because this had to be the five, this, this, which sees two here, must see at least six vertically. So I can do that. And once it sees this sees six vertically and sees one horizontally, it can't be six anymore. So that is nine. Wow. So that's eight. <laughs> uh, this is now a six, seven pair. This, okay, so this eight is seeing... I think it's seen its its quota now, so that cell has become grey. Might connect to the five, which would be useful. So the nine is seeing it's seeing six vertically, seven. So it needs two more. Oh, it could be just those two. So I can't extend that over here. I don't know what this this how this nine develops its count yet. And the six seven here. Well, we know that that's going to be either like that or like that or something like. that. Something like that, one of those two things, I think. Right, so nine is now over here. Maybe it's Sudoku we've got to do. Or maybe not. Um, let me think. If that's, if that's a one, what's that saying? That's a valid cave clue. 
so it should be ringed by a eupentomino like this one. And that's not going to be what right, because the 2 then is going to become a 3. It's going to see 3 cells. So that is not a 1. This is a 1. That's the world's most disappointing 1, isn't it? It doesn't do anything. That's probably a 2, is it, to connect with this? I don't know. Um, the other things that would be useful, actually, thinking about it, are these two digits, aren't they? If I knew... Oh, well, yeah, hang on. Ha, hang on. Ha, ha, ha. I've got something here. Right. These two digits see 5 horizontally, so they are at least equal to 5. They must, in fact, be greater than 5 because otherwise they will be five and they will repeat in the row of the Sudoku. So these are bigger. These are sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. So they both must see green cells above them. Oh, this is beautiful. Good grief. Okay, and because these both extend, now this cell, if that was gray, I'd have a checkerboard and we can't have another checkerboard. So that's got to be green, completing my two clue. So my two clue gets ringed on all of its potential sides by Graynesses, avoid a checkerboard, grayness, avoid a checkerboard, grayness. This clue is now known. That C6. Ah, oh, this is just so clever. Wow. Just wow. This cell can't be grey now because it would be in a part of a six island and it was count would be five. So that's got to be green, which must see five, so it's got to see those cells can't see this one or it would see six. Oh, this is just brilliant. This is quite brilliant. So this now does see five. That one. Well, that one could be part of the gray cell and make a, a T in the grid. Or if that's green, it's got to be. It would have to then be a string going to here. And then that would be grey. Let me look at that for a second. That would be grey. That looks quite good at... Oh, hang on. That's got to get to the edge. No, that's... Hang on. This has got to get to the edge of the grid. Ah, okay. This doesn't work. I'm just trying to see if there's an easier way of seeing this, which there may be. Well, I, I, I don't think, well, let me just explain it. If this six is green, this gray has not got to the edge of the grid. Now it can achieve an edge of the grid by coming along here and meeting up with these friends here. But you can see that to do that, it's still got to get to the edge of the grid. So it's, it's, it would have to connect here. It couldn't connect here because I think, unless I'm wrong, that's creating a complete wall there. And if we know we can't have a complete wall here because this checkerboard needs to find a way of, of getting its green to circle the Sudoku grid. So that won't work. And the same is true here. If, if we do something like that, well, the reason that doesn't work actually might be different. The reason that doesn't work is that this string of greys now is bigger than nine to put in that cell. Yeah, hang on, let me just unwind this a minute. So maybe the way to think about this that's simpler is to consider this cell. Now we can't have another checkerboard, so that cell's got to be grey. Now maybe it's easier to see that if this green comes over here, like that, and then ends. You've got to get this grey to touch something. The only thing it will touch is this, and I think that that is more than nine. Four, five. It's at least, it's eleven, I think. And I can't write eleven into a Sudoku cell, so it doesn't work. Wow, that's complicated, actually, though. That is complicated, but it's br it's brilliant because it means this is grey, and if that's grey, it's completed its shape size, so it must be orthogonally bounded by greenliness. We mustn't make a checkerboard, so that becomes green. 
uh, th this is a 9. It sees 9. It sees 5 horizontally and 4 vertically. So we can just write 9 in there, which means there's a 9 in one of these three cells by Sudoku. That cell is now at least a 4. Well, that's actually interesting. It's at least a 4. It can't be 5, 6. So it's 4, 7 or 8 into this cell. I would love it to not be 4. Although maybe it would be better if it was 4. All of those would become green. This cell is at least... Oh, this cell is at least a 3 because it can't be 1 or 2 by Sudoku and it's only seeing 2 at the moment. So that cell turns green. You see, if this was, if this is a big number, what you can't do is create a wall of greys. I can't connect this shape to the, the top edge of the grid because that's going to prevent this cell and this cell connecting around the edge of the Sudoku, which we know has to be achieved. So actually, look, maybe maybe the solution here. Oh no, hang on. What I want to do is to put the options in for these remaining digits in this row. I wouldn't normally do this, you know I wouldn't, but this is quite complicated. So I feel I feel justified. Look, those can't be sevens by Sudoku. This this can't be a two by Sudoku. So two is in one of these cells. So two is in one of those cells. I've got to ignore all of these twos in the grid. 7 is in one of those cells I've just seen. So 7 is in one of these two cells. Right, Can that, that can't be... Ah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Right. So now, how could that be a green 7? It can't see 7 vertically, so it can't be a green 7. Aha! In fact, I've just seen it also can't be a green 8. So that is a green 3 or 4, but that is a 7 that mustn't touch the top of the grid. So that cells must be grey. Uh, one, two, now this cannot be grey. Yeah, so one way of thinking about this is that to connect this green region we've got at the top of the grid to the rest of the green like down here, we're going to have to come through this little strait of Gibraltar here. We're going to have to come through there. Now this is five, so it's got to grow at least one more here. That green's got to grow again. This, this now is clamped out at three. Good grief, so none of those are three. I've got a two, four, eight triple here. Don't use the four. <laughs> that doesn't matter. Um, wow. Okay, come on. What does this mean? There's a four in one of these cells by Sudoku. Do I know what that is? Surely I do. Um, I don't know, actually. It depends how this seven achieves its, its quota. <laughs> oh no, come on, come on, what do we do next? <sighs> One hour, 13 minutes. This is about this time when I start to worry that this is going to be an enormously long video, but I also start to worry that the software is just going to glitch at this point and then I will just cry. Um, wow, where do we look though? Is there an obvious place? Do this can that be a two? Do I know somehow which of these is the two? Or indeed which of these is the eight? I probably do. Um I've still got to put ones in the perimeter. Of, ones, I love ones in the perimeter of this Sudoku because they they actually give me immediate greenage, don't they? But unfortunately, I don't think we know where these ones go. Oh, hang on, what's going on? That cell can't be a 2 now, or a 1. I 
there's something going on with this cell. This cell, I think, is is under pressure because what what colour is this cell? If that was grey, it would have to be at least a three, and we know it would have to stick straight out because if it comes into either of those two cells, it's saying those two cells would have the same number as itself in order to be in the same size island. So that doesn't work. So this cell is undoubtedly green. Oh, but that takes all the pressure off it. That's weird. That's so strange. All right, so let's fill in these digits, as the, fill in the options for these digits. Three, five, six, nine. Now, this, this is allowed to make this green, I think, if it sees a green either above or below it. So now I can't say anything about this two, which is infuriating. No, that's not true. I can say something about this two. How could this two be gray? It's really, it's just, it's just, again, it's another simple deduction once I have the idea of thinking of the, this through. If, that's, if that is grey, it needs to touch the edge of the grid, which is either the blue or this edge of the grid, and it can touch neither. So that cell is green, which, which means it's seen its quota. <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that you can just de get that. Oh my goodness. Right, so it sees two, so that must be grey. That must be grey. That must be grey. Don't make checkerboards. All of those are grey. Good grief. This now is going to be struggling, I think, to be anything other than three, although I can't prove that. I mean, I suppose maybe, it, no, maybe I'm wrong. Is this connecting to the seven by seven or is it connecting to the, to the right hand side one? It could do either. It could do either still, especially if that's a big green number and sort of striping a big green through the grid there. Uh, OK, right. OK, but now now these two cells can't be ones, can they? Because we know wherever one appears in the perimeter of the Sudoku, it's ringed by a eupentomino of greenliness. And you can't put you can't put ones in those two cells. So that could be a one. Is this, is this two effect? Ah, ah, okay. In fact, if you put one in the corner, what happens? You can't put one in the corner. Nobody puts one in the corner. Because if you put one in the corner, it's still subject to the same difficulty. It needs to be gray but it's never touching the seven by seven. So one does never go, one's never in the corner. One isn't in those cells. So one's in one of these cells. Now I'm wondering whether we can do some magic here. That can't be a one because it would be surrounded by a green new pentomino and the two would be green and C3. So that's not a one. Now is this, does the same logic apply? It does. This is beautiful. You can place one in this column. If that's a one, it's surrounded by a new pentomino that two is broken, it sees three cells. So that is not the one. This is the one, therefore it's gray, therefore it's surrounded by greenlinesses. So there is now a one in one of those three cells. I don't know what's that, I don't know what that's done, but it felt, it felt dramatic. Um, that is now not green because if it was green, it would see four. So that's gray and needs to get to the seven by seven because it can't get to the perimeter of the actual grid. So that's gray and therefore is a two, which therefore must be bounded on all orthogonal sides by green linesses. Don't make checkerboards. What about that then? Is that able to be green really? Ah, maybe. Wow, okay, I, I'm not sure whether I can state with any certainty what that one is. Um, okay, but presumably now, presumably, 
there is an issue regarding the size. Well, that digit, for example, the maximum number of greens it could see is six. So that is a number that is a maximum of six and is not one or two. So that is three, four, five, and six. That cell can see greens above it, so we don't know about that one. Three, four, five, or six here. Two, four, eight up here. Okay, mm, sorry, I'm not sure whether I can do better than that. I probably can. I mean, can that really be nine? It would see eight vertically, eight greens vertically. No, that, okay, that, that is actually impossible because this can't be an eight. Yeah, that's complicated though. So there, there is a relationship, I think, between these two digits. If this is nine, it's going to turn this cell green. And the count in this cell is going to be one different to the count in this cell, because this cell sees one in its east-west direction. This will see zero in its east-west direction. So they would have to be one different. Now, actually, I'm going to try that again. Uh, six and five work, though. Five and four don't work. Can that be five? If it's five, it, it does turn that green, and that's going to break it again. So it's not five. If that's three... It, yeah, it's still great. It's still great. If this is three, how does it get its third cell? Well, it can't get it here because that will make it four. So it must get it here and turn this green, in which case this is seeing one less than this. So it should be a two and it can't be. So that is a six, which means that this cell, well, it still does turn that green because it does because it needs to get reach a count of six, but we now know this is a five. So this is now seeing five vertically. So even if it takes that one, it's definitely taking that one. Um, and now we don't know. It could take this one or this one, in which if it goes upwards, it takes two more. But that's now become not able, that's, not able, that's green and not able to be two. In fact, it's not able to be four because it's going to see it's going to see five vertically, isn't it? Five greens vertically. So that is now eight, which means these are now a two four pair. Do not use the four head. <laughs> um, OK, so this is seeing eight vertically. No, not eight. No, because it can see horizontally. It can see horizontally. So don't get excited. That's nonsense. Well, this is seeing, it's seeing five vertically, so it must be seeing three horizontally. So if that becomes green, well, no, hang on, if, that, if that's green, whichever one of these is two is wrong, because it, you're going to see three in that direction, so that must be gray. And it must grow, so that must be grey. Now, do I now know which of these is two? How, how does that not... Ah, I'm going mad, I think. I don't know. I still don't think I know. That's so weird. Okay, well, I'm sure I do know, and it's just my brain is letting me down. But I'm coming back to this eight now. Because this is telling us we see five greens vertically, so this needs to see three more horizontally, so all of those must be green. And in fact, that must therefore end in a grey in order to make the count correct. So that's quite a nice deduction. And in order to... No, we still don't know. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, I still don't know about this cell. Right, but now, ah, that cell has not is not five or six anymore. This is three or four. And in this column, we've got threes, fours, sevens, and nines to put into, into the Sudoku positions. Now, can we get rid of anything? Three comes out of that one. Um, nothing comes out of this one. Nothing comes out of this one. I don't believe it. But that's green. The maximum count this gets vertically is five, isn't it? 
six. So it could be seven or nine if it starts to grow in this direction enough. So if, what about that cell? That this cell depends on whether this hits the boundary or not, doesn't it? If that's grey, is that really? Well, yes, I suppose it could be a seven or a nine. That seems very unlikely to me that that's grey. I'm not sure I can rule it out. If this is two, both of those get, oh, that would be, that'd be really powerful <laughs> if that's two. If it's four, those two both turn green. That then would be a two. So these, all of, all of those would suddenly turn green. That looks, that almost looks likely to me. And I say that because I think that gets the eight correct. So here, let's come back to that then. If that's two and that's four, let me look at that. If that's two and that's four, because this then has to be gray, that would have to be gray to avoid a checkerboard. This four is then done. So all of those turn green and that one this four clue is green and seeing three that's green uh we've got some sort of checkerboard thing going on here that's green to get that green out actually so that four is now completed turns the two gray which would have to hit the boundary it would go miles absolutely miles if that's true but I don't think I know which way round they go. That would be really, I think, I think that's probably the next step, but I can't see it immediately in terms of how to do it. And that's infuriating. So what could it, what else could it be? <laughs> what else could it be? This is green. If that's a green three, it would have to be this green and then that shaded. That might be possible. I don't know. Oh, if that's three, that's four. That would make this green and this shaded. I don't know. I, again, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem very easy <laughs> to know <laughs> which of these is correct. What about, oh, hang on, th that cell's gray. That's got to be grey, because if it was green, it would see too many cells. That's been available for ages. So that must be grey. Uh, OK, that, that's very, very underwhelming. That does nothing. OK, so for those of you who've been shouting me, at me about that, I totally understand. But I think we can now both agree that that was not the next step of the puzzle. Uh, it's a step. What about this five five combination down here? Can I, if, if that's green, then at least those have to turn green. If it's, you know, if it's gray, everything, everything's easier. And do those fives have to be part of the same clue? I don't know. Not sure. Okay, let's try. Let's try. <laughs> let's try Sudoku, which uh, feels like a very difficult thing to focus on at this point, but it could be relevant. Right. So let's try this row. Look, we've got to place four, six, seven, and eight into these cells. Ah, so that's a four, six pair. So maybe it's Sudoku. So that's a seven, eight pair. Now, if that's a four, six pair, we can say with some confidence that these cells are five, eight, and nine, and that's not nine. So these cells have got to be two and three. The problem is the, these blue ones don't do anything. The only way they're going to be useful for the cave 
is to the extent that they affect the, the very perimeter of the Sudoku puzzle. And unfortunately, I'm not seeing how they do that. Oh, that can't be nine, look, by Sudoku. That's perhaps worth recognizing. Is it possible for this to be nine? Is that would be a green nine, wouldn't it? And it would have to therefore pick up this cell, which would cap it out vertically at a five count. So it would have to have four cells this way. So all of those would turn green. Whereas if this is nine, what are we then saying? We're saying that that, that would have to be a gray nine and connect to this, which, which wouldn't have reached a count of nine, it would have only reached a count of six. So it'd have three more cells to build on, which could be those three. Uh, if it, it couldn't get to the edge, because that would create a wall of, or a wall, which would be a bad thing. Um, Right, okay. I don't know how I decide which of them. I definitely know there's a 9 in one of those two cells. I definitely know there's a 9 in one of these cells. Uh, Okie dokie. I don't know where to look. I'm sorry if everybody knows. Do I... I know this digit. What do we know about this digit? I know this nine is seeing is seeing five in that in that little alleyway that this one doesn't see. So it's seeing it's seeing itself and three the, this way. So this digit ah that digit's at least a five then. Because, because it can't be four by Sudoku. So that's got to be five or eight only, which is perhaps interesting. Although I don't quite see, it, would, it looks like it should do something, doesn't it? But I'm not sure it does. We know that this green, this green here is seeing four this way. So it must see this cell. Is that the deduction we get from that? Yeah, I think that's the deduction. Oh, maybe it can't be eight. Ah, yes, it can't be eight. That's it. There you go. This this cell of all the cells that I should have been focusing on. Apparently, it was row nine, column two, or in <laughs> in, in in the other way of thinking about it, row thirteen, column two, or column four. Because had I focused on row thirteen, column four, I could have seen. Okay, this nine is seeing four this way. So this is seeing four this way. It can't see more than another three, so it can't be eight, so it must be five. That cell, therefore, has to be grey. Don't make a checkerboard. Now, this green uh, must be green, because otherwise it's part of a four region. So that's green. Um, these cells are now sudoku -y. They're sudoku -y, aren't they? <laughs> ah! Didn't mean to do that. I want to put in one, two, three, and eight in there. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's but good. Believe it or not, I think that's good. Because that two, three, and that one, two, three, eight form a quadruple and make that a seven. So that's an eight. That's not eight anymore. There's got to be a one and an eight. So that's now down to two or three. I've got a two, three pair in this column and those squares have got to be one, six, seven, triple. And that's not six and that's not one. And if this is a one, six, seven, triple, you've guessed that these are four, five and nine, which I can't do anything with, infuriatingly. That cell's not able to be a two because of this two. This, oh, I was about to say this can't be a two, there's a two here, that's total and absolute rubbish. Um, oh, do I know the colour of this cell? I think that would be a useful thing to establish. It would, it would be very useful if it was grey, 
because if it was grey it's almost creating a wall that couldn't exist so that would have to be green so if that's grey it has to be a one if it's if it's green it would have to be an eight because it's seeing four this way and it can't be an eight again because if it was eight it can't it can only pick up three good grief right so th right the point is this is huge again it's a beautiful piece of logic if this cell is green we know it's higher than a three in count so it has to be an eight in count when it's only receiving four horizontally and it can't get to eight vertically so it is actually a gray cell now what the problem with that is that obviously being a gray cell it can't take this cell because that would create a, an orthogonally green blocking wall which would pen in the checkerboard that we found so it must be a one and therefore we get the ring of a sort of u pentomino ring around it we can delete some things from these cells by sudoku that cell's not able to be a one anymore uh, i've got all the ones now in the sudoku perimeter which were the the most constrained digits so that's a shame that cell's not green anymore because the two would see too far so that's gray this it must see here which forces this to be gray this green has to get out so that's got to be green that cell is now seeing at least four um so I'm definitely pencil marking this. I'm just trying to see if it's easy to see what it's got to be. Okay, so by Sudoku, let's just do Sudoku on it. It's got to be three, four, or eight, I think. It sees one, two, sees five, six, seven, and it sees nine, yeah. So it sees six different digits. So it's three, four, or eight, but it's we know it's seeing four. So now it's at least four or eight. If it's four, this cell becomes gray and would be at least a two. Oh, that would again be huge. In fact, that's an interesting point. Where is the two by Sudoku in this box? You can actually see it's in one of those two cells. So this being a two, so what, there is a strut coming down from in one of these positions that's a, uh, a two domino of greyness. Um, and either way, either way, this cell is always green because we're going to have to get this green across to the right hand side of the grid so if that's a gray domino you can see actually that would force this to be green as well in fact this is always green both of those cells have to be green that gray is already connected to the edge of the grid so it doesn't have to achieve any greater size um oh, look this is going to be a gray five isn't it if it's a gray five, that's green, which would have to get out. So that would be green. That would be saying that this needs to see five. So it would have that would have to be green as well. I don't know. Uh, right. So. <laughs> if this is eight, the world is oh now i'm suddenly worried i've made a mistake here i said that one of these had to be two and form a gray domino coming down but what's wrong actually with whichever one of these is two being a green two ah oh, yeah that could be true i'm not sure there's anything wrong with that I mean, it's true to say one of these is a two by Sudoku, but I hadn't thought of the fact that they have to, they could be a green two. That's really annoying. If this is an eight, a lot of this row is becoming, we've got four here, five, six. Oh, that's right. That's it. It's just simpler than I've been making it. If that's an eight, those four have to turn green and that's going to make this eight into a, about an 11 which is not going to work so that is a four and that's great because that now has to be gray which probably means it is the two but i'm not certain about that now i'm slightly worried about my two logic um we know that this must be green don't we 
because these can't be part of the same island by Sudoku because they must contain different digits. So that's green. It can't be a one, so it has to get out. Now, this is that both of those are now green to get this green to pass through from left to right. So the question now is, can that be, can that really be gray? I'd love it to be gray. It'd be useful because then this green would start be, being under pressure. Four comes out of this corner cell. So we're down to three or seven in this position. Probably I have to pencil mark this cell, I think. It's either two, six, seven or eight by Sudoku. I mean, I'm almost certain it's going to be two, but if that was two, it would have to go there because it couldn't come down. So if that was two, this or on the other hand, if this was not two, that might be how the puzzle gets finished because we still see, it still feels to me like we're, you know, we've got a lot of extra thinking to do to understand how on earth all of this gets resolved. Um, you can see that making that sort of six, seven or eight and having to build it out over here is going to do all sorts of work. I think I've got a pencil mark this cell as well, though. Right. So in theory, that cell has the ability to be two, three, six, seven or eight. All of those are possible. Although, I mean, some of those are going to be very, very difficult. Is it possible that all of those are green? Gosh, it's only just possible for this to be a green three now. It would have to be ringed on in all those positions by greys. That would be really useful to know. It would be really useful to know, wouldn't it? Uh, I wish I could I wish I could understand how whether or not that's possible. On the other hand, if that's th three, then that would be four and everything would start to get resolved. Complicated. <laughs> that's what this is. <laughs> One hour forty was another enormous. It might even be longer than the video I had to do on the rosette puzzle by Glipperall. It's funny. Uh, I, and don't get me wrong, this is a very hard puzzle for me, at least. I'm finding this very difficult and very interesting. But it didn't feel... I feel like if I sit here long enough, I will I will solve it in the end. Whereas with the Glipperall one, I didn't have that feeling. <laughs> um, it's funny how puzzles affect you mentally. Now, what got a feeling this could could even be Sudoku that, that I need to think about to solve this. One of those three squares is a four by Sudoku. One of these is a two. I mean, it's so beautifully minimal as well, isn't it? It really is. I mean, there's very little extraneous information has been given to us. I'm trying to see see if there's some sort of connect meta connectivity point that will allow me to figure stuff out a bit a bit more quickly, but I can't see anything. Oh dear. Um two, three, six, seven, eight into these squares. So that square is two, three, six or eight. Ah, uh, that's not two actually, hang on. That's not two, is it? So that's only three, six or eight. So if that is a three, that suddenly becomes a gray six. Which, well, I'd have to be careful that that gray six didn't hit the perimeter down here. So it would be really powerful again. I think everything that suggests this is a well a three in the corner, no doubt that I have no doubt Magnus made this a three in the corner. It would be a very useful digit indeed. But having said all that, unfortunately, ah, I don't know how to do it. 
Um, is there a way for me to tell whether this... Oh, I can't remember. what. How many is this seeing? This is seeing five vertically, isn't it? Is there a way to know whether this... If that becomes green, then this grey connects to the wall. And that, I don't think that's a problem. I mean, it might be for reasons that I can't fathom, but I can't see why that's a problem. Because the green is still able to pass through that passageway and get down to the bottom of the grid. Or is it this six? That six, if it's, well, whether it's gray or green, it's quite interesting. If it's gray, it's got to get to the edge of the grid and it couldn't join this. So it'd have to, might have to miss the five. I'm not sure. Well, it would have to miss the five, but, um, I'm not sure whether that's problematic or not. We could... What else could it be? Is there a way... Oh, hang on, I've got a 1 here now. Blocking in my 9. Ah, so I can now come back over here at long last and greenify both of those digits. I'm not sure that's going to do anything. I really am not. Oh, that's so depressing. Has that affected these fives? I'm not sure it does. It's useful. And I know that... I can't have a checkerboard over here, can I? So I've got something like this or like this. How are these fives ever going to get resolved? I see, I think I know how this is going to resolve. I think somehow, some way, we'll get the six and seven resolved. That will position the greys around here, and that will somehow limit these fives down here. That's what I feel is going to happen. Okay, let's try. Maybe it's, it's possible to prove this can't be a big digit. If that's a big digit, you can now see we have, we'd have to do that at least. I mean, it might have to grow more than that. So this cell now, we've got to get this green out. So all of these would become green. Now, is that for some reason problematic? Yeah, ah, that's it, that's it. Yeah, it's not too difficult once you see it. Right, it's not, I'm not saying it's easy by any manner nor means, but let's come back here. Remember, if we get a string of greens, they can't have the same count. So by making this six, seven or eight, because both of those turn gray and this green has to get out, these two greens here will have the same count. They're only counting horizontal digits. So they would contain the same number. So that is, that's lovely. I mean, to be honest, it's lovely. I've got nothing but respect for that as a, as a deduction. It was totally and utterly fair. I just had to have the right thought. Um, so therefore, this becomes the grey digit. That therefore, oh, bobbins, bobbins, it can still be three. So that's all pressure. All pressure comes off this digit, does it? And that's got to be three, six, seven or eight, and it can be any of them. Oh dear, oh dear, that's really depressing that you can get this digit and it does nothing. There's now a two in one of those two cells by Sudoku. If this video, by the way, triggers over two hours, I'm actually going to stop the video and then restart it so I so I don't lose lose all this work. It's very very rare that that, that, that we ask Mavavi to work uh, for this length of time, and it is not the most stable piece of software in the world. So um, I'll carry on for a bit, but if if we get to that point, I'm, I'm going. I'm not. I'm, I'm not risking this solve being deleted. Um, Three, six, seven, eight. So if this is, if that's eight, for example, all of this turns green, doesn't it? One, two, three, four, five. In fact, if it was eight, exactly that string of digits would be green. 
None of them could be three. Oh, hang on, that's quite an interesting thought. I need I do need to put a three in one of those cells. And obviously if all if these two are both green, it, it's seeing far too many cells in that direction. So that cannot be eight. Now can it be seven? One four no it would again it would make these two both green i'm not sure it can be six this would be so cool if this can't be six if it's six again how do i do it there's no way to make this a green six without taking those two cells thereby making it impossible to put a three in that sequence wow so that is three which makes that a seven in the corner oh, it's a seven in the corner no Okay. Oh, whoa, but I get a grey digit here and a grey digit here to cap out my three. This this looks like an interesting number because that's got to stick out because it can't take that cell, which must now be green because otherwise these would have the same total. So this green has to come down here, look. That's got to bend. Oh, this is, this is free and dandy. It's fine, isn't it? Right, if that was eight... It would be saying there's eight horizontally, which there clearly can't be. So that's six, that's eight. So that's a big number coming in here. This seven now is seeing one different. It's seeing six horizontally from this clue and it needs to see one vertically. So that becomes green. Pushing my eight down I might have broken the puzzle. Oh my goodness, have I broken this? Because this has got this has got to grow. Well, it's got it cannot come to the bottom row because it's going to cut the greens that are around this checkerboard off. So it's got to stay away. I think it, maybe it can do that. This suggests this is correct as well, doesn't it? Look, 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 look. Right, that becomes green. Don't make a checkerboard. That becomes green. Wow. Wow, this is great. Now I can fill in the greenliness of this six sequence. One, two, three, four, five. That's green. That's got to be grey. That completes my three clue. So that must be isolated on all sides orthogonally. Don't make a checkerboard. Wow, this is so exciting now. I know I'm a strange man and I find strange things exciting, but this is very exciting for me. Um, right, so this is now four or nine. It can be, it can't be, it can, ah, it can't be four ever. Whatever color it is, it breaks. If that's a four and we make it green, it's seeing five vertically. If we make it four and we make it gray, it's seeing too many that way. So that's a nine. Whoa. That was not what I was expecting. So it's a nine. Do we know whether it, what color it is now? Yeah, we do actually, because if it's nine and it's green, we know that because of this five, it's only seeing five vertically. So it's gray. Ah, so it's part of this. That's a green three or four. So that must be green. Oh, this six looks very, very difficult, doesn't it? Oh, it could be green. If it's green and that's gray, it works. It probably is then. Okay, right, this is exciting though. Right, have I now, have I now done something clever Sudoku wise? That's now not nine. I felt like I got loads of digits down here. Does it actually done anything? Ah, yeah, okay, this five clue now needs to see two more vertically and then make that cell gray. So this eight clue now is correct. This is, it looks like it's doing some work with the two and the four up there, doesn't it? So that's potentially exciting. Well, yeah, okay. Okay, how is this now a gray four? That would push this up to be gray. Now we can't now take this, or this is going to be a five cell gray sequence. And in doing, making this green, we create a checkerboard and we know we cannot have another of those. So that's lovely. That is lovely. So this is the two, this is the four. Now I thought when I looked at this before, I thought any arrangement of this was massive. That's got to avoid a checkerboard. This four needs to see four. So that becomes green, that becomes gray. Avoid a checkerboard, that becomes green. That would be isolated if it was gray. So that's got to be green. This four 
probably it's I can see if it's green it's got the correct count assuming that's gray if it's gray that oh it's weird it works both ways how strange is that I don't think it can be I, that looks wrong because this green looks very difficult to me um but let me just mull this over for a moment or two if you don't mind Gosh, it, might, it would be so easy to make a mistake here as well, wouldn't it? That's grey by this being a seven count. Now, okay, let's think about this then. So if this is grey, you can see that's grey to avoid a checkerboard, which means all those cells have to be green, which breaks the two. Because by checkerboard logic, this cell would also be green. All of those would turn green. The green would see, th th the two would see three. So that's great. So this is a green four, which means that's a gray to make sure it only sees four cells. That's a gray. This now can't be gray or it's seeing too many. So that's got to be green, which I wasn't expecting actually. Avoid a checkerboard. So that's the two greens we're allowed to see. So all of those become gray. Don't make a checkerboard. Whoa. Okay. That, ooh, ooh, that grey has not seen an edge. So that's got to be grey. Oh, and look, it can, it can close here. I was thinking that couldn't be grey because it would cut the greens off, but the greens rather naughtily have sneaked down, sneaked down there. They could go like that. Oh, okay, bobbins, right. All right, so do we know what's going on in the corner now? If... There is a three in the corner. It doesn't get a song. If that is a, what's going to make it difficult for this two? <laughs> if, if that is, if that's, if that's gray, what happens to the world? Well, if it's gray, I can see it can't be a string like that because then all those have to be green and the two would be broken. And that would be the same if we put the three across the top there. So the only way that this is a gray three is if it's exactly like that, and that would be green, 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 and don't make a checkerboard and the two would see too many again. Right, that's lovely. So the three in the corner is green. Now, does that mean that this is grey or does it mean it's green? And the answer is, I don't know. I mean, it can't be green. If the three does that, that cannot be green. It would have to be grey. If the three does that. It's complicated, isn't it? It's complicated. If it does that, what colour is this? Wow, okay. If it does this, this is still not green. Because if it's green, let's think about how this would now work for this three clue. That cell has got to be, this two has seen all its digits now. It's seen those two cells. So all of those have to turn gray. But from the three clues perspective, that's gray as well. So the three would be, this, this green gets isolated. Wow, wow. So that, Right, so actually what we can say is we don't know what this three looks like, but we do know that this is grey. And if it's grey, it's not coming sideways now, because that would break. Because it would join to a huge region and not be a size two. But I still don't know what it does. I mean, the green could come that way, and then that would be grey, and those three would be green. Or, or the green, can the green do a little thing like that? No, no, that's going to get isolated if it tries to do that. So it's, it's, it's definitely a stripe. It's a stripe there or a stripe there. If it's a stripe here, that becomes grey, that becomes grey that becomes green oh, i've got a horrible feeling we might have to sort of 
do this both ways round and there might be some cells in this little 3x3 three three that are always one colour. Um, maybe that's what I do need to do. Is that going to... Is knowing anything about this 3x3 three three going to impact the rest of the grid though? I think I might be focusing on the wrong thing. I, I mean, in, in the sense that I can't actually see how this 3x3 three three is going to propagate down the grid. So perhaps I don't do this next. What about, okay, what about this 3-4 pair here? One of those is going to lead to a grey in one of these positions. The other is going to lead to a green and then a grey. So there's just sort of a, a grey X-wing going on here either in those cells or in those cells. Is either of those problematic? To avoid a checker, if that's grey, to avoid a checkerboard, I'd make that grey. That would give me, that would give me eight cells of my nine cell region there. So that would then have to be green. That would make that grey. That would, ah, that's interesting. So if that's grey, I know exactly what my nine cell region looks like. And that actually looks very persuasive, doesn't it? I suspect that is correct. Oh no, hang on, that no, that's wrong. I'm wrong. No, sorry. I'm now now going to countermand myself and say I think that's now impossible because I'm suddenly re realizing that I'm going to have a grey here as well, and that's going to create a checkerboard if it's not connected to this grey. So I think this doesn't work. Right, let's do this slowly. So my contention is that if this is three and this is four, there is a problem in the world because this cell becomes grey and now this cell becomes grey. Now we can't have a checkerboard, so that's grey. Now what is this six now? Well, this six clearly can't be grey because it's going to poke out immediately and touch this nine clue. So that becomes green, which makes this grey and this green. And all of these green, and that's a checkerboard. It doesn't work. So that is the wrong way round. So this cell is therefore... Well, so we need to do it the other way round. So that's four, that's three, that's grey, that's green, that's grey... Oh, Bobbin's Bobbin's face. Is that do? Is that well? I can see it's doing some stuff over here, Sudoku wise. But actually, I still can't even conclude whether that connects to that. I think it's put less pressure on this six than was there before. Although it might be tricky for the six to make that five clue work. Gosh, that would be a difficult deduction as well. That could be true. But I, but while I've seen it, I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit of the Sudoku. That's two. Oh, three, eight. So that's two. That's three. That's three. And that's eight because of this three here. Uh, <laughs> that's really not done very much, has it? Oh, you rotten, rotten, rotten thing. My goodness me. Okay, so instead of that then, we're going to come back over here. I have crept over two hours, but I don't want to stop it. I'm going to risk it, I think. I feel like I'm not that far away now. Um, now, if this is grey, my contention is that there is a problem. Well, let me explain. This now got to reach a size of six without making checkerboards and things. So this, we can't make a checkerboard. So this five sequence is forced, but this hasn't touched the edge yet. So it would have to touch the edge here. This would have to be green and it couldn't be a count of five. So that's great because it means that this is green. And if it's green, that becomes gray and we mustn't make a checkerboard. So that becomes gray. So this is probably, well, this is the same problem. <laughs> this has got to touch the edge and not break this clue. So you can see if it touches, the, well the thing is I suppose it could go up there and touch the edge. Oh, maybe it can. Okay, maybe, I, I mean it feels very much like this is going to be a grey five, but I'm not sure it's forced. 
How weird is that? It is weird. But what I, yeah, just to be clear, what I'm worried about, oh, actually, this is good. Let's try the nine, go back to the nine clue. I've got six cells in it. That can't be gray because it would connect this to this to avoid a checkerboard and it would be bigger than nine. So that's got to be green. And now my nine is coming up into one of those two and then one of the, or both of these two potentially. So it's, it's definitely coming into this column. I'm wondering if it has to hit this now. I mean, it's so difficult for me to believe this isn't grey, but I can't. If this was green, it would have to go push greens at least here. Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, but it's quite difficult to see why not. If this is green, you can see both of those must be green as a result of that. And this needs to, oh no, maybe it could get to the edge there. Oh. Oh, okay. There's no necessity for grey clues to have digits in them, is there? I don't think I read that in the instructions. Okay, well, I can't prove that then. I can't prove that. This nine, though, it's got three more cells to take. And we know that in taking those three cells, it is not allowed to get to the perimeter of the grid or it's creating a wall of greynesses, which is bad. Therefore, it's got to take exactly three of those. No, actually, that's not true because it could take this one. So if it took these two, how does it not take this? This is, I suppose, the question I'm now gra grappling with. How does it not take that cell? Well, it could take those two, but then its next digit is impossible. Let's, let's have a look at that. So it's managed to not take this so far, but we know it can't take those. It can't take this because it would create a wall. It can't take that. It would create a too big a region. Um, it now can't take this because obviously then it has taken that. We're saying we're trying to prove that it can't take this. And it could take this, you might say. But the problem with that is that that creates a, that creates a checkerboard because this would then have to be green for the purposes of keeping it apart from this, but that creates a checkerboard there. So there is no way. So that cell is part of this nine. And the only way it can be is like that. Good grief, that's really tricky. So all of those get greenified. Don't make some, any checkerboards over here. This gray hasn't got to the edge, so that becomes gray. Has this done this three clue? The three clue couldn't be that, could it? The three clue couldn't be that. I think I convinced myself of that fact because, yeah, it, it gets penned in by grey. So it can't take those three. So, yeah, we said it was a stripe. So it's a stripe horizontally, which means that's grey. Completing the two clue, which means that's green. Don't make a checkerboard. That's green. Don't make anything bigger than two. That's green. There we go. The top bit of the grid is done. Now... <laughs> If this is five, if this is five, you have to do this in the right order, don't you? It's really cool. If this is five, how does this ever get to the edge of the grid? This five couldn't join up here or it would be more than five. So the only way it can be five is like that. And you can't now connect that to the edge. So that is grey. At long last, we've proved it. Orthogonal connections to this island, therefore, are all green. Get that green out don't cut off the grid wow that's going to be that's right it's going to be green otherwise the the green at the top doesn't connect to the green at the bottom so we're almost at the point of doing stoku wow in fact that's a bit frightening that's a bit frightening because i'm suddenly realizing apart from this i've basically done the perimeter of the grid which suggests there must be Sudoku a go go that we can do at this point, which surprises me mightily. There's got to be an eight in one of these. Um, 
that four is looking at that cell. Okay, that might be it then, because I can see that's going to push that to be a four, that to be a one, that to be a nine, that to be a five by pencil marking, which could do something for us. So that becomes a nine, that becomes a three. These become two, five, and no, two, six, and seven. These become three, five, and eight. That's not six. That's not three. That's not, no, that's not eight. I'm sure there's a lot going on here that I'm just not appreciating, but never mind. Let's, let's keep going. Um, where does one go in row seven? This one up here means this is a one. So there's a one in one of two places here. This digit here is a six or a seven. Unfortunately, I don't know if we know the order. I need to get this six and seven resolved. That's That was my instinct. Three, five, eight, nine in this column. So let's put in some pencil marks. Three, five, eight, nine. Now my phone is buzzing at me. Um, I can't take that at the moment. Three, nine. Ah, five, eight pair. <laughs> is that going to be it? That gets me this four. Um, what about that cell? That's not eight. That's not able to be nine or three. I've got a five, eight pair. So that's nine. That's three. That's five. That's eight. That's three. That's five. That's nine. Oh, go on. Come on. Be kind. Be kind. That's five by Sudoku. That's eight. Oh, one, two, three, five, six, seven. No, no, five, six, seven here. Um, that's not nine. So fives and eights seem to be giving a little bit of joy, don't they? Um, one, two, six, and seven into these squares. One, two, six, seven. That's not two. That's not one. What about this row? Two, four, six, and seven. Two, four, six, seven. So that's not two. I'm trying to spot things and failing. Really badly failing. Ah, that two is useful, isn't it? That double two, in fact, is looking at that cell. So that gives me a two, six pair. Ah, and it gives me a one here which means this is a one by the power of pencil marking. So perhaps these two digits, which have to be an eight and a nine. So this given nine suddenly gives us another digit. Nine and eight go in, eight and five go in. Um, don't get distracted by the phone. Come on, Simon, come on. Um, Okay, have we have we managed, or maybe I do have to do this in order to influence the Sudoku to finish it. That is also definitely a possibility. Um, it's just not the one I thought was gonna happen. Four, six, seven, it does seem to all be about sixes and sevens though. Oh no. Two, six. Two, six, seven, there's definitely a four in here. Is there anything else that influences this middle grid? I can't, uh, I don't know. Okay. So is this really resolved then? Let's have a think. Okay, so let's have a think. What could it be? Maybe maybe it's as simple as saying, is that gray? If this is gray, obviously both of those have to be green, as does this by the, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, it is this. Okay, so this is gonna resolve the six, seven. And it was a simple question. It was just not one I was prepared to ask before. But if this is a five, because I have to circle this in greens and get this green out, this five sees four and I can't make this green or it'll see six. So that doesn't work, believe it or not. That is green. And this now has to see quite a lot vertically. It's got to see at least these. 
but we don't know whether it sees this one or not. It sort of depends, doesn't it? That now has to be green. There's not enough space for it to be anything else. So that's got to be green. It sees three. Right, if it sees the corner, there's a problem. Because then it, again, it will see the wrong count. This has been constructed by a total genius, hasn't it? So those two become grey. This is now not seeing five. So that becomes thing. That becomes grey. And now we must avoid... Our final job is to avoid a checkerboard here. So that's got to be grey. And that's, I think, the cave done. And then we can get the count here. Look, that is now seeing six vertically. So that's six, that's seven, that's seven as a result of all of that shenanigans, um, which makes this six, this five. And that six is getting me a six and a four at the top and a seven here. And therefore, that's a two, that's a six, that should be a four, that should be a two, that's a six and that's a seven. I have no idea what's going to happen when I click tick. It doesn't like it, but I'm not surprised. Goodness only knows how confusing this is for the software. But what a magnificent puzzle. And I think I've solved it. I'm really relieved. Two hours, one of the longest, probably the longest Sudoku video ever. I mean, it's a five star puzzle and, and getting my head around the rules took about half an hour. So I hope you'll forgive me. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, we don't do this that often, but we do hear that many of you enjoy it. For anyone who is still with me now, thank you so much spending this long with me on a Monday evening. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And please pay tribute to this fantastic constructor for what he has done here. Because imagine, I mean, it's hard enough to solve it, as you've just seen for me at least. But imagine trying to make it so that all these little deductions work so smoothly and beautifully. And you get all of these little epiphanies as a solver. It is it's mind bending, the cleverness of some people. And I loved the puzzle. And I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments as I say, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.